Okay, so I just apologise about the extreme close-up. This video is about what your dog can see and what you can see when you're out and about. I've shown you there'll be three clips to follow here. First clip is what I can see. I'm about five foot ten. What I can see when I'm out and about, and I've used the slope of the garden behind me, which you can just see just over my shoulder there. See the slope of the garden. Now, the height that I am, and I'm not the tallest guy in the world, I can see long, long, long time before um, my dog can, okay? So, uh, the next, uh, the second shot is what a, height, a dog about the height of a Labrador Retriever, a Rottweiler or something like that would see. And then the last shot, I've gone right down to kind of just above my ankles and shot right along the ground and you can see the, the, a lot of distance has passed before your dog would be able to see what uh, what you can see. Now this is important because if you've got a dog that's reactive to other dogs or if you've got a dog that's distracted by other dogs, if you're out and about and the terrain that you're walking is um, even just slopes and I mean that, that uh, slope behind me, it's not that much more than you would see in some streets. So if your dog's reactive, you're now a long way ahead of where you thought you were when you first saw the dog and it might be too close for your dog, it might be within his threshold distance which is not good for him and if he's distracted by other dogs um, it's exactly the same thing again, he might start pulling towards him so just by being aware of that when you're walking and hanging back if there's a dog approaching you, if you hang back think about what your dog can see so that you let the person appear over the brow of the hill and you've still got that distance to work and to work with your dog I had a couple last year and this is exactly what was going on with them. The couple were um, a retired couple and they had a Bichon, really small dog but they walked the dog on an extending lead and because they were apprehensive that their dog was going to kick off at other dogs when he saw them, when they saw the dog they clicked the lead shut and put tension on the lead or clicked the lead tight and put tension on the lead. So the dog's now got nowhere to go so this click and then tension in the lead is now a trigger to the little dog Alfie that another dog was going to appear so they're actually preempting the dog to react so what we did was just when we went out for a walk I asked them to be a little bit more aware of, of what the dog could see pointed out some stuff and we put the dog on a loose lead and we were able to walk around the park for 45 minutes or an hour and we saw between 30 and 40 dogs and the dog didn't react once, he actually had really really cool social skills but because of their behaviour around other dogs they were causing the dog to react because they were apprehensive about what was going to happen which is completely understandable because he had reacted in the past so just by seeing what your dog can see and just thinking about it it makes it easier for your dog so I hope you enjoy the clips and if there's any comments again guys just stick them below and I'll see you next time alright thanks a lot, cheers, bye ok so I'm 5 foot 10 and this is what I can see as I approach. Now you can probably just see the stuffed dog just in the centre of the screen there. I'm going to walk forward. Now I can see him, I'm probably about 45 feet away from him. As I move forward, you can see him there. Okay. So this is me again. Now I've put the camera about the height of a Labrador or maybe a Rottweiler and I'm going to move forward and I've zoomed in a little bit but I'm exactly the same distance as I was before so I'm going to walk forward and we'll just see the distance at which point the stuffed dog appears so that's him appeared there so I'm now that's me I had to get about 10 feet or 15 feet closer than I was before and that's just the top of his head there and it now takes me another 6 or 8 feet about 10 feet now till I can see him fully okay so that's it uh, I've probably crept up a little bit there in fact that's about Labrador height there so I'll move a little bit forward again so that's me on a kind of with a, a Labrador height or maybe a kind of relatively big dog height and I can see him um, can see him fully there so I've reset again and this is me now about the height of a small dog so Cavalier, King Charles, Spaniel, Westy kind of wee dogs like that okay now I'm going to move forward So that's me half that distance now and still no sighting of the dog. I keep moving here, just slow that down. So that's me appeared there. That's just the top of his head there. And that's where we can start to see him. So that's me probably about half or 
two thirds of the distance again before he starts appearing, or two thirds of the distance I started at, and that's now him fully uh, where we can see him. So you can see there's a massive difference in what we can see and what your dog can see when we're out and about. Uh, a relatively steep slope in the garden here, but it's not that, it's not too steep, and it's the kind of slope that you could expect to see in a public park or in streets when you're out walking. <laughs> 